water-based dye that is reactive with water. The great thing about the ink pads, those are going to allow you to stamp and blend and do all of those things. Uh, a reinker is a concentrated version of this ink. So a lot of people think like these are these, totally different. This one dropper full is equivalent to the amount of ink that's in an ink pad. One dropper full, not one bottle. So it's a concentrated colorant. So if you're going to use this, the cool thing about the stains now, this takes this ink pad and gives it a whole fluid nature. So I can cover tags, canvas, ribbon, anything like that, large surfaces with ease. So I'll give you just a couple of examples. First off, if we just start with a tag, for example, if I wanted to go in and ink this up, we'll take broken china, and I just apply with my blending tool and I can go in. This is going to allow me to really get that nice soft look from my ink pad. That's what the pads will do. So I, I can blend if I want, I can ink it up and I can stamp it, and if I stamp with it, I'm gonna get that nice crisp detail. Uh, distress is also embossable. But if I wanted to cover a whole large area, obviously, of a tag and get that modeled effect, going from the pad's not going to do that. That's going to always give me that soft blended look. Well, now that Distress is fluid, let's get the same color so you can see it. I just like laying them down. It's easier for me to see. It is. And where's Broken China? There it is. I can take this, and this is going to allow me to color the entire tag. Same color, but now it's far more fluid application and this is going to be reactive with water so you think okay well can't I just take a reinker and mix it with water you could but now you're going to get a watered down version of that ink this it won't be reactive this however is the same type of ink as this pad so it's going to be reactive with water which means if I spray it with water it's going to do all sorts of cool blending and mixing and all that when you dry it and it's quick because now you have yeah you have the ability to ink grunge board and okay grunge board and chipboard and canvas and any of those things simply by swiping it off. It's quick. It's really quick. What's your favorite new product that you came out with? Favorite you... new product? It would have to be Distress Stain. Yeah. Those taking, are my favorite too. Taking Distress into a whole new level for me, that's what's exciting. Because I mean, I've been using Distress now for uh, just about seven years. I, you know, love the ink pads and it's been a great way to distress. I mean, stamping and all of that. But this just creates that background. So this is the stain, just I quickly have a background. But I'm going to go back in with my ink pads. It certainly won't replace distress pads, ever. It's just going to give you that quick base coat that you can then go back and add your distress inks to. So now if I wanted to go in and add some color, well, now I'd go back to my distress pads and just start introducing some color. Yeah, so here you can go in. There's a little pine needles there. Yeah, I mean, all the, all the products and, of course, all the colors are designed to uh, integrate together, obviously. You make it look so easy. It is easy. <laughs> Don't listen to her. She does, too. She gets really perfect, grungy. Right? Yeah, you just kind of go with it. So I'm just going to show you a couple quick backgrounds. So this one, again, even though we blend it, we can go in and still react what we just put on there. So let's see, the stains would have never given us that soft, dusty concord or that soft pine It would have just been the fluid version. So that's the thing, is kind of just adding this to your arsenal and using them back and forth with one another, not saying, oh, I'm just going to use stains or I'm just going to use ink pads. It's, now I've got a fluid way to use it to quickly do my background of Broken China. Now I can just start adding little hits of color to it. All right, so there's one way. Now let me show you another cool way to do it. Another cool way is I can actually take the stain and put it right on my craft sheet. So I can go in just with colors and just put that down. Whatever colors you want. I want to throw in maybe a little wild honey. We can throw that in there. Now, if you've seen uh, me do wrinkle free, you know that I normally like push an ink pad down, spritz it with water. Now, with the stain, you don't have to do it, it's already fluid. So now I can just take this. Oh my god. And now I'm going to get all this really great color in one application. And again, it's reactive. So if I wanted to spritz it with water, like, look at that. Get that whole cool fluid look. 
just for me to understand. What influences me? Uh, creating influences me. Like, you know, anything, anyone? Um, no, I, I'm pretty, I mean, I'm inspired by a lot of different artists, but uh, not anything that I try to put in my own art, you know? I think I'm inspired by artists that don't do anything like what I do. Because I look at that and I'm like, gosh, I wish I could think like that, yeah. you know? Um, but I try not to get too involved with trends or anything like that. I just kind of want to do my own thing, and I hope that people like well, what it's it usually because people are following your trends. Well, <laughs> that's well, probably I just, why. I mean, but I still craft, and, like, that's what I'm always doing. I'm always crafting. So when I'm not here, I'm in my studio playing around. People go, aren't you tired of it? Don't you think, like, after a trade show, you'd be like, I don't want to see another ink pad. It's like, no, because doing this, I'm thinking, ooh, I can do this, I can this. Now, when you created the Distress ink pads, did you have an idea about the distress, the, st the stains? Or is that something that kind of just... Something the stains came just up? happened. I mean, really, the more I used the Distress pads and the more I found myself really doing a lot of this and then constantly re-inking, and it's like, I just wish this was liquid. So, in fact, in my book, I was showing how to, like, do scribble yeah. stain. And I was like, and that really is what sparked it. I'm like, this is cool, but it's... When you still put the paper down, it was like, it's super saturated. I'm like, so... I want this color, but I want it liquid. And they're like, well, just water it down. I go, well, if you do, it doesn't react. It doesn't do this. If you water it down, it's just like watercolor. It doesn't right. do anything. It takes away the fun of distress. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I want it to work like an ink pad, but be in a liquid bottle. All right, let's give it a shot. I mean, that's the stain. You, you couldn't do that with yeah. the pad. You just, the pads are all soft. This is like, I don't know. And it's pretty cool. It's inspiring stuff. And another great thing is, you can stamp with this stuff too. That's and you're going to get a completely different and what, effect than you would with an ink pad. What made you, um, I guess, put the actual designs in back of the stamps? That was like, uh, I was yeah. like, I mean, that's. Yeah, it was. You know, it was a long time coming when I teamed up with Stampers Anonymous. It was always what I wanted to do as a stamper. I always wanted on the cling, but um, it's very difficult to do, especially from uh, a U.S. manufacturer, which all the stamps are made in Cleveland. Uh, so they're not done overseas, and that's a big thing because these are all handmade, one set at a time. So and they do an amazing job. But after the hundredth set, I'm like, all right. So we've proven that this is worthy of kind of stepping it up. And so really, Stampers Anonymous changed all their equipment, got all new stuff in, so they for can just him mold them, <laughs> screen them, and put them on. Yeah, it's because it's like the ultimate Stampers. I... It's like it's a rubber stamp that I can see. Right. That's. It's the best of both worlds. It took why people like clear stamps because they can see it, but the quality of having a rubber stamp. Because really, a rubber stamp, I mean, even like this, I can just take my distressed stains, I'm going right over my stamp, and I can stamp the stain. And then just dry it. And you get that really great watercolor look right from the beginning. And again, you can spray this. And this can be reactive with water. So it's, you can see already that it's kind of that blurry look, but that's the whole idea of stain. So, you know, I wouldn't stamp, like I probably wouldn't stamp these butterflies with stain unless I just wanted silhouettes, knowing that I wouldn't get any of the detail because it's far too fluid. So, again, that's going to be the difference of having your distress stain Sorry. to do these backgrounds or using your distressing pads. Yeah, they just go hand in hand. Match made in creative heaven. Really. So for ribbons, trims, anything like that, you want to take any of the trimmings and you want to color it. We can go in and work with the stains. So let's take, what haven't we done? We haven't done dusty concrete. Let's take that. It's going much better. Oh, you'll like this color. I'll do pink for you, just because. I don't know how pink it's going to stay. Because my hands are a little gross, but you can take even color like sponge sugar, and I can just apply it right <laughs> on to the trim. And now you have stained trimming if you want to. If you want this to have kind of a mottled look or a more variegated look, I'll go in and spray aside with water. And let's take a little bit more vibrant color. If I just touch it with a stain, that's going to just blend it right in. And I can take all different colors. I wanted to go in. There.